Hey guys, Penguins Recordings here and today in this video I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be trying out Ubuntu 13.04 the daily build image on this old HP netbook. So before we go into the tests let's check out this old netbook. It was purchased by my family in 2010 I believe. You can see it's a HP Mini Currently, this old netbook, its backspace key is broken and its wireless card is broken. So later on, I might be using a wireless dongle on the left side. Its model number is 1006TU HP Mini 110. You can see the wear and tear on this is really old. There's even the previous Windows XP license here. Something from my university, my brother's university. All right. So what's in this system? In this system, there is an Intel GMA 945 that is used as an Intel, gra uh, Intel graphics card. And then the processor is an Intel Atom dual core 1.6 gigahertz CPU. So without further ado, I'm going to go to we're going to boot up Ubuntu 13.04 in this. All right. If I don't do that, it will bug out and go just to a black screen. This is an old netbook so it's not functioning 100%. So it's a good test to see just how optimized is Ubuntu 13.04 or not. We'll see what games we can get it to work with and what we can't. And you have to put in the mouse. And so we're logged in. Let's try clicking on this the Ubuntu dash. Seems to be pretty smooth. Try pressing the button. Momentary delay, but this is definitely a lot faster than before. Here comes the first test. We're going to be trying out Minecraft. I've already previously updated it so we don't have to waste time. I'm using OpenJDK 6 which is available in the Ubuntu Software Center. It can take quite a while to load since this is... It's going to say it can't log in. That's fine. And click play offline. Alright, so so far so good. I haven't done any meddling except install OpenJDK 6. This is with a fresh install of Ubuntu 13.04. Feels slightly sluggish in the main menu, but let's set it to full screen mode. Let's see if that improves things or not. So under video settings, graphics is set to fast, smooth lighting is off, 3, 3D anaglyph is off, uh, render distance is short, Performance is max frames per second, advanced OpenGL is off, clouds is off, server textures is on, particles is all. I'm going to click full screen on. Let's see if this improves things or not. Oh, that's someone outside. So single player, go to the world that I've already selected before this. Loading the world. It can take quite a while to make the world, which is why I didn't showcase it here. It took quite a long time. So as you can see, it lags quite a bit. But I understand that it takes a long time to load into DDR2 memory. When I first tried this, it lagged for so long. I had to wait a couple minutes. So in this video, maybe we'll give it a good couple of seconds. Moving around, if I hit E, hit E again. So now we've given it some time to load. There's even fog in the distance and it's turning to night already, that's how long I left it. Gameplay is a lot smoother now in Ubuntu 13.04. Not as smooth as Lubuntu, 
Ubuntu is still a lot faster, but this is an improvement. Ubuntu 12.04 could not play Minecraft on this computer. Neither could Windows XP or Windows 7 on this computer. Made a crafting table, made a couple of sticks. Let's see if I can put a crafting table down anywhere. There you go, crafting table. Put the stick in. Let's see if I can make Alright, so under the library, I have Counter Strike, the first one installed, Cubeman and Half Life. So first, let's go through Counter-Strike. I click play. Alright, so we're at the main menu of the game. Loads up pretty fast. Quit, options, find servers, new game. Let's go to options. Let's go to video. So we have it set OpenGL. Resolution is 1024 by 576. And the display mode is wide screen. All right. So at the bottom of the screen we have frames per second at any given time. So in the menu it averages 60 frames per second. It's pretty nice but let's see what it looks like in game. Let's go to CS Assault. Uh, enable flashlight so we can play around with the light source. Click start. Remember this is running on DDR2 memory, 2 gigabytes, so it's going to be slow when it's loading. first thing to note is if it can be played at all or not. Alright, so we're in the game and it looks like it can be played. Click OK. Auto assign. Auto select. Not only does it look like it can be played, it looks like it can be played well. Don't think I have enough money to purchase a proper weapon. Alright. You can choose knife. Frames per second is about 24. 24 frames per second as I move around. You see the world, the smoothness of the screen. Let's change to the pistol and try shooting. Thirty frames per second when we're looking at the wall, when we're not looking at the wall. Twenty frames per second while shooting. Not bad. I would have liked to test this with a smoke bomb, but I don't have the cash in the game. The smoke bomb is something that would drop frames per second by a lot, but if there's no smoke bombs, then the game runs. So we know that this game runs. So it's on to the next game. Alright, we're going to try Half-Life now. Offline mode. So it loads up pretty fast. We go under Options, Video. Set at OpenGL render. 1024 by 576 is the resolution. And it's in widescreen mode. These are the settings right here. Just the same as Counter Strike. We have 60 frames per second again in the main menu. Alright, let us go into the easy mode. It's loading up. Twenty frames per second. Smooth enough that gameplay is worth it. We move around in the train. Twenty frames per second. Still good. Still good so far. Fifteen frames per second just now with so many things on the screen. Now we're averaging about 30, 40 frames per second, because there's not much. This train is inbound from level three dormitories to sector C test labs and control facilities. 
Now we're dropping to 25 frames per second, despite all the action happening on the screen now. 20 frames per second, 16. This is definitely already considered playable. Alright, so that's pretty much it for this one. This shows that the game works pretty well. Alright, so here's our final test. We're gonna run Cubeman. Remember that all of this is running off the Intel GMA945 graphics card in there. Well, it's an integrated graphics card, so it's really the lowest of low end as you can possibly get. So I'm surprised that any games work so far. Any 3D games, that is. Alright, so Cubeman starts up properly. Alright, so the main menu works so far. Let's check out in the other options. So there's no supported resolution since this screen's resolution is already very peculiar in itself. This is running at full screen, quality is at best graphics apparently. We'll click save and exit. Let's try a new game. Oh, you can see the mouse is slightly off. To select the button, the mouse has to be slightly below. It's probably because the white the screen is actually taller than this. Let's try classic defense. We're just gonna go with the basic arrow map. Click play. Smooth. So far so good. Start. Zoom in. I'm gonna create a flint, hopefully. Oops, that was a grill. Never mind. Hopefully I can try and max out as many grill uh, as many flints because the flints shoot out multiple squares. See how, how smooth it can be. Moving in and out, everything is fine. You see a part of the screen is not there though, because the resolution is not right. So far so good. I'm going to add another flint. Still smooth. Still smooth. Looking good so far. Looking good. I'm gonna add another flint. I'll make it full up four flints in total. If this guy doesn't die. Look at that, all those effects on the screen. Alright, so we can pretty much conclude that Cubeman works great on the GML GMA 945. So does Counter-Strike, the first one, Half-Life, and not so much with Minecraft though. Alright guys, so that concludes it for the tests on the HP Mini Netbook running an Intel GMA 945 graphics processor, an Intel integrated one, so you know it's the lowest of the low end. So under system information under Steam, you can see the processor is set at 1.6 GHz. Two logical processors running Ubuntu, Raring, Ringtail, 32-bit development branch, kernel version is 3.8. Here we are, the video card. It is running on an Intel 945 GME using the open source graphics drivers. Driver version is 1.4 Mesa, 9.02. And the RAM we have is 2 gigabytes, which is DDR2. So all in all, on this old system, which XP couldn't handle well, Windows 7 couldn't handle well, Ubuntu 12.04 could not handle well. Ubuntu was the best, but seeing how Ubuntu 13.04 is now, and how nice it is, how responsive it is, I definitely have to go with Ubuntu 13.04. Do you see that? The smooth animation? Sup, right down. Under system monitor, just to give you guys a bit more information. Since this is still under development, there's no information tab, so we just have to go to resources only. Two processors at any given time. Memory being used right now with only Steam open in the background is only 377 megabytes. They've done a whole lot of optimizations with this. So our 2 gigabytes, I still have 1.7, 1.6 gigabytes free. This is pretty good. 
my verdict on this is I'm, I'm amazed with 13.04 and I can't wait to get it on my desktop for better game improvement uh, when you play hopefully it'll increase FPS so that's it for this video guys I hope this shed some light on how Ubuntu 13.4 is doing and if you have this netbook and you were interested in knowing how it runs with Ubuntu now you know thanks for watching guys and like the video if you enjoyed it